<coughs> okay next we will discuss electric field due to spherical shell of charge uh, we call it shell theorem also <coughs> what it means suppose we have a spherical surface let's suppose we have a football or uh, let's suppose we have a balloon I can write it here and we spray charges on the surface of this balloon here this is the charge we spray it on this balloon so the, the charges are on the surface of this balloon so it has some surface charge density which I call and suppose this spherical surface is a radius capital R now the difference between volume charge distribution and this spherical shell of charge distribution is that in volume charge distribution the charges are placed the volume is fully filled with charges while in this case the charges are distributed or spread on the surface of the shell on the surface of this uh, spherical shell now this is a cross section basically it's a it's a it's a round in shape structure on that we spread charges on the surface now this is the charges are distributed on the surface so it has some surface charge density sigma which is equal to, which is equal to charge per unit area or we can write it charges surface charge density times area and we know that area is sigma into 4 pi r square so this is charge now this is also two parts now we have to calculate the electric field outside somewhere here and we have to calculate the electric field inside now there are two theorems about it the first theorem is a uniformly spherical shell spherical shell of charge behave for external point external point is if all the charges were concentrated at its center this is one theorem what it means now it means that if the charges are distributed on the surface of a spherical shell okay so if you want to calculate the electric field somewhere here then this electric field is equivalent to calculate the electric field at a, of a point charge at point B means the charges are distributed at this under this surface but for this point it looks like the charges are somewhere at a point a uniformly spherical shell of charge behave for external point is if all the, the charges were concentrated at its center right somewhere here and the second theorem is a uniformly spherical shell of charge spherical shell of charge exert no force exert no electrostatic force on a charged particle placed inside the shell The other part of the this theorem is if you place some 
positive test charge somewhere here then these charges which are placed on the surface of this shell they exert no electrostatic force on that test charge now we will prove both this theorem by using mathematical calculation now let's start by using the first theorem okay overall we can write it as like these are the spherical shell charges are distributed on its surface so we will consider two points one is point p and the other one is point p prime p prime and p i can write it somewhere here so we the circle should be smaller one so we have to plot two gaussian surface now its radius is capital r okay one gaussian surface is this and the second gaussian surface is somewhere here because we are going to calculate the electric field somewhere here on this charge if electric field here is zero then it means that there is no electrostatic force so we have two surfaces now one is surface s1 and the other surface is s2 these are the two gaussian surface now this surface gaussian surface s1 which lies outside of this spherically charged charge distribution and surface s2 is lies inside this spherically charged distribution so we will consider the first case this case first and for that i will use another h suppose suppose this is the spherically spherical shell of charge and the charges are charges are distributed on the its surface like by explain charges on a balloon its radius is r now we are going to calculate the electric field somewhere here at point p so for that i will draw another gaussian surface a gaussian surface now this is the gaussian surface this is dotted line this is also spherically symmetric okay and its radius i consider to be smaller now the flex at point p the flex at point p is d5 which is equal to e dot d and the total flux through this this is the gaussian surface through this whole gaussian surface can be obtained by integrating this equation so if i integrate the right hand side left hand side i get phi and from the left hand side i got e dot d a now again if i consider the electric field from this charge here its direction is this one e if i consider a small area element d a its direction is also along the direction of electric field so the angle between e and n is zero angle between e and r d a is zero so we get flux which is equal to e d a because cos zero is equal to 1 now this is spherically symmetric shell this gaussian surface so it means that the electric field everywhere is the same so electric field is constant so we can keep it outside of this integral and we have d a and area of this gaussian surface is e times this is the total area of this gaussian surface which is 4 pi r square this is equation let's suppose one also according to gauss law the flux through any closed surface the gaussian surface is equal to 1 over epsilon not times the total charge enclosed by the closed surface this is equation number 2 comparing equation 1 and 2 we have e into 4 pi r square is equal to k over epsilon not uh, e is equal to 
वन ओवर फोर पाई एफ साइन आर नॉट के ओवर आर स्क्वायर एंड दिस इज द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ऑफ अ पॉइंट चार्ज एट पॉइंट पी विच इज एट अ डिस्टेंस आर सो मीन्स दैट दिस फेरिकली शेल ऑफ चार्ज लुक्स लाइक अ पॉइंट चार्ज फॉर पॉइंट पी where we want to calculate the electric field so if this is the case i if you consider this whole surface charge on this spherical shell to be concentrated somewhere here then the problem behave the same it give us the same results this is first shell theorem so this shows that the uniformly shell behave like a point charge for all point outside the shell this proves the first theorem now we will move to the second part of the theorem which is a uniformly spherical shell of charge exert no force on a charged particle placed inside the shell so here we again consider this shell of charge sorry second theorem Here again we consider this shell of charge. And charges are spread or distributed on this surface. Now we are going to calculate the electric field somewhere here. For that I will plot a draw a Gaussian surface. This is the Gaussian surface. The radius of this shell is r capital R, and the radius of this Gaussian surface is small r. This is the Gaussian surface. now we know that by definition of flux flux to any closed surface is e dot da and also we know that according to gauss law flux phi is equal to q over epsilon not the charge enclosed by the closed surface now here this closed surface gaussian surface does not include any kind of charge so it means that this charge here is zero phi is equal to zero over epsilon not if this is zero it means that phi is equal to zero if phi is equal to zero it means that integral of e dot da is equal to zero which implies that area is not equal to zero because we have some area of this surface so it means that this e is equal to zero so it means that the electric field vanishes inside this a uniform shell of charge if e is zero then we know that force is equal to q times e So it means that force is equal to zero. So there is no force on a charged particle placed inside this spherical shell, and this is the proof of second shell theorem. Thank you.